Okay, thank you very much for this opportunity to come here and um, talk about the organization I work for, Tactical Technology Collective. We are um, an international human rights organization, recently moved to Berlin, well, about three years ago. Um, and it's really wonderful to be here in a Berlin institution to be able to talk about our work. Um, so thank you uh, to, to, uh, for inviting us. Um, so um, I'm also joined by a number of my colleagues who will be um, here to answer more questions that you have, um, maybe more specific questions like, you know, how many people are you and where's your office and can we, can we be involved <laughs> in, in the work that you do? Um, so, uh, so please do feel free to, to ask questions and look at some of our materials. Um, the other thing I'll say is that I have a tendency to talk very fast when I'm nervous about things, though I don't really have a reason to be nervous, but if I'm talking too fast in English and it's too much, then just go like this. <laughs> Can everyone do that? <laughs> right, <laughs> okay, <laughs> fine. Um, so, so yeah, just, just uh, I can slow down if, if I see you doing that. Um, also, I'm not using my own machine, and sometimes um, I become a bit stupid using other people's machines, but um, I suppose that happens to all of us. So, I'm here to talk about, I'm here to talk about the organization that I work for and the, w uh, and the things that we make and do. So a title for this talk could be 17 things about tactical tech that you really want to know, or a very brief history, a very, very brief history of technology. Um, and the reason why I said 17 things about tactical tech, um, I'm sure you've all seen these articles that are on BuzzFeed and Gawker and Upworthy. They seem to power the internet these days. You know, things like 16 ways that you know you're addicted to hand cream or 37 pictures of pit bulls that will restore your faith in them uh, or 22 pictures of Miley Cyrus's open mouth. Um, so I was kind of inspired by this, this form, which um, the New Yorker magazine refers to as a listicle, um, and that this is what the internet has become now. It has become, well, parts of the internet are um, all just see lists of things that seem disconnected, but when you put them all together and you put a random number in front, like not five, 10, 15, or 20, but you put 17 or 33 because that's how many things you have. So I have about 17 things I'm gonna talk about, well, a little less than 17 and some are websites. So um, maybe 17 give or take three things about tactical tech uh, you really want to know. Um, and it's difficult to talk about an organization that's been around for 11 years and, um, and to know what aspect of the work to talk about, how to start framing something which is um, actually spreading into so many different areas, as you'll see. Uh, I mean, one of, it's sort of an internal joke, but one of the things that we talk about a lot in our office is we're never sure about how to talk about the work that we do. Uh, we build websites for other people and other projects, but we find it very challenging sometimes to build a website about our own work. Um, and I thought a way to anchor the conversation today may be to talk about the things that we've actually made. Physical things I can show you, physical as in digital, um, but also things that we've printed. And through that, um, maybe talk about the history, a very brief history of the applications of technology in advocacy, because we work primarily with advocacy groups, we work with journalists, bloggers, political actors of different kinds. Um, and I think that I think that this discussion will also then be about uh, what are the questions we're interested in when we say we work with technology for advocacy? Who are the groups that we work with? Uh, what are our values and philosophies? And I think it's also maybe a narrative about how technology has changed over the last 11 years, give or take a few years. Um, and, and I think you'll see that through some of the things I'm going to show you today. Um, so this is primarily a chronological narrative. I will start with the very first thing that we made, um, but sometimes here and there I will disrupt that chronological narrative and I'll, um, I wish I could mess with the time-space continuum, but I can't, um, but I'll try. Um, here and there, it may not work. Um, okay, so I think that the thing that also uh, comes to me when I was just looking at this list today was uh, of things I'm going to show you is that 
there's many really amazing ways in which technology supports the work of advocacy groups and being able to talk about social justice issues. But I think we're at a moment right now where that celebration has become a lot of suspicion, a lot of questions, a lot of doubt. Um, but that has also inspired, I think, a lot of new tactics and for subversion and uh, reimagining what's possible with the internet. And um, eventually, I think this is a story about the politics of information and how that works and the choices you can make in working with it. So, um, so I'm going to just start with a bunch of things that we made. Um, and so the first thing that Tactical Tech made, one of the first things that Tactical Tech made, was something called NGO in a Box. And it was a set of three CDs. And it was basically uh, a way to present free and open source technology to NGOs um, working in emerging networks or the global south about how you can use these technologies in organizing advocacy work uh, and campaigning uh, and blogging. Because uh, So this was roughly, I think, about 2004, 2005. And the, the funny story for me was that I actually came across these CDs a couple of years later. Uh, many years ago, I was studying in England, and there was this guy I was kind of interested in, and um, he kept organizing these documentary film screenings, and they were mostly all very boring. But I went to all of them because I kept wanting to, to see him, obviously. And there was one screening in which um, I stayed right till the end. It was a very long, painful film about human rights abuse in Sri Lanka. and. Um, he, I think in that meeting, he kind of figured out why I was going to every film screening. And he got very nervous, and he dropped a whole lot of things. He dropped his, uh, the helmet he had, he dropped his bag. He'd keep dropping these things. And one, at one point, he dropped his bag, and these DVDs fell out, and was this. And I saw that, and I said, NGO in a box. That's so interesting. Who puts an NGO in a box? And um, that was also interesting that the year before I heard about Tactical Tech, and after that I didn't hear about him anymore, but anyway. So that's NGO in a box. This one was called the Audio Video Edition. How do you use uh, audio and video tools, free open source audio video tools, to get your message out? Um, and this one was the Open Publishing Edition. Uh, there was a third one, which I couldn't find in the office. Um, and um, as you'll see, many of these are print publications. We love to make things, uh, print and not print. Uh, this was something called the Quick and Easy Guide to Online Advocacy, Tactics and Tools. So it was basically saying, how do you use publishing platforms? How do you use uh, image manipulation? How do you use different kinds of software that's out there? Um, and this was things like Secure Gmail, Tor Project, Rise Up. I mean, these things like security and privacy as well as um, publishing, blogging, platforms, and software. Then there was the age of maps. And we produced this beautiful little booklet called Maps for Advocacy, uh, an introduction to geographical mapping techniques. Interestingly, very, very few of these booklets are left. And the thing is, this was produced at a time when mapping technology was just becoming accessible. Um, and now I suppose it's much more democratic in a way, or it's much more accessible. Uh, and there's many different ways in which uh, you can think about maps, create your own maps. This was an introduction to advocacy groups about different ways in which mapping can help you talk about social justice issues. Uh, and of course, these are all going to be available. You can flick through them when I'm done. Um, wait, I just have to check with the order because of the time-space continuum. Um, and just make sure like it's you know, these things have to be synced up, otherwise it doesn't work. Um, okay, then we go, we swip, switch to... Then there was this thing. We did a whole series of inner box. As you'll see, we really like things in a box. Uh, and then we break the box. But this was called Message in a Box. And again, it was a really nice compilation um, of um, tools for publishing, for getting your message out there. So let me for a moment show you how pretty this is. There was a book, and there was, um, there was a little booklet, and there was a CD. So you had <laughs> different ways in which you could actually choose to access this material. Um, and when you, when you look at the publications, you'll also see that 
we really like making pretty things. We like paper. Uh, we like really good design. And we can tell you about the details of this, but we may not share all our designers. That's a different issue. Um, so we had message in a box. We had mobiles in a box. That was, again, about 2008, and saying, how can you use mobile technology for advocacy? What are the perils and the potentials of using all this great new technology? Very interestingly, about two years ago, we had a brief. We got some money to say from an organization in Delhi, a women's rights organization, to say, uh, we love your toolkits and we want to customize these toolkits for uh, women's rights activists in South Asia and East Africa and the Arab region. And this was two years ago, it was 2011, 2012, and we were like, but these uh, documents, are, these, these books are really old. Who's interested in them and like we're interested in them? So they gave us money to actually create new and updated versions because all the tech had changed. Things that you put into a booklet in 2008 and 2009 are very different now. Um, so how could you customize these for women's rights organizations, update the technology, uh, and create, they wanted, you know, these, these kind of print versions. So I'm very happy to show you this website today because we've launched, this one was launched a couple of months ago, but here we go. <gasps> we have English, we have Arabic, we have in Hindi, and we have Swahili. Um, and I think that's, those are the five languages that we have. Um, and also the two people who've worked on it are sitting there, Gabby and Lisa, and I'm very happy that we have the new language versions today, and all the people who made the back end are also here, um, Laurent and Nico and Kostab. Um, so please do talk to them as well about this. So it's, what's really great is that something that, you know, in our memory or, you know, I mean, I wasn't even working at Tactical Tech when messages and mobiles were made, but it's still so relevant. And this is something that I think an organization has to deal with, the, the legacy, that something is old for you, but it's new for somebody else. And there's ways in which you can remix, uh, recut, um, and update your content to, to create something that's completely new. So, um, so that's all about kind of technology in advocacy and campaigning and ways in which you can share this with a wider community of activists and journalists and bloggers and around the world. And then there was this. This is like the big daddy or the big mommy, at least in 2009. It's called 10 Tactics for Turning Information to Action. Uh, we made an educational documentary of the same name and there was this, this box kit, which I'm gonna put the microphone down for a minute, but I will pick it up again. Oh, that would be very weird. <laughs> no, no, I mean, that's very nice, but it just makes me feel a bit strange <laughs> if somebody's <laughs> holding it like I'm supposed to be Beyonce or something. Um, <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Um, yeah, so, <laughs> okay, actually, it kind of works. I was just gonna do a mime, okay? Of, um, <laughs> okay, so you had, like, you know, these cards about, like, you know, how do you use technology in campaigning and advocacy? Um, and even, I mean, I could tell, like, a whole story about what does it mean to actually create a box like this, about who designed it, the dynamics of it, how many mock versions, dummy versions do you have to create before you find the design that really works. Um, and there's a whole um, story of the people who made this. This is actually made in Bangalore. All of the stuff that I'm showing you now, all our print and production happens in Bangalore. Um, and um, there's you know, many people involved in the, the creation of this, but I'm the one who gets to talk to you guys about it. Um, so 10 Tactics, I think, was really important because what 10 Tactics does, thank you, um, was draw from the community, draw from the community of people who actually have been using technology uh, in different kinds of advocacy. And 10 Tactics, the film, was about 50 minutes long and it profiled people around the world who are using technology in really interesting ways. Um, what happened to 10 Tactics was the film got screened 200 and uh, maybe 300 times uh, in different parts of the world. And how we did the screenings was we said to people, we'll send you the boxes uh, and any material that you want. Just host a screening wherever you are. Um, and um, people wanted to do it. They wanted to share it. They really liked it. Uh, so, 10 Tactics, I think, was really popular. And then we created this, which was 10 Tactics Arabic. 
And we basically went to a number of people we had worked with over the years to say, we think that there may be people in your network in the Arab region who are interested in this, and you have a lot of your own stories uh, and ways in which you may want to customize this. So would you like to make something more than a translation? What's a way in which you can remix or customize this? So we held something called a localization lab in Beirut a few years ago, where we said to a number of people who had, we had built up through our years of working on all these other things, and said to them, um, if you had to take all of our material in 10 tactics and some of the earlier guides and another website, which I'm not showing you today because it's just way too complicated, uh, even for this you know, rather uh, specific narrative. Um, we said, if you wanted to remix and recut all of that information and do whatever you wanted with it, what would you make? So, we, so these six organizations, had different perspectives on this information. So one group said, oh, we're interested only in this one website and we want to translate it into Arabic. And it was a website about data vis visualization tools. Uh, another organization said, hey, we really like 10 tactics and we want to do 10 tactics in the, con in the context of uh, the Syrian conflict and how activists in Syria are actually using technology. So they did that. Um, and then there was the guys in Lebanon uh, who made their own version as well, you know, of lots of different kinds of tools and case studies uh, and practical how-tos, how do you actually do it? Because that's the thing, N very few NGOs have people who sit down with them and say, this is how you actually do it. And then this was the sort of compilation of them. So this was, a, uh, people said they wanted something they could use in trainings and workshops if they actually wanted to tell people about how this stuff works. So we made a set of cards, um, which are about you know thinking about the strategy for your advocacy and the tools that you want to use in your advocacy. Uh, so that's ten tactics Arabic. And what's what's next? Um, okay, and then I'm gonna sort of um, do that. Finish this thing about campaigning and advocacy and visualization. Earlier I mentioned how we really like the visual and, and working with what it, with the visual and what the visual means. So around the time of, I think it was messages and mobiles, we, we produced this little booklet, an introduction to information design. It's called Visualizing Information for Advocacy. And it was about information graphics and information design, how do you use it? It went back to like the earliest thing done by Jon Snow mapping, uh, you know, how, which you know, led to the discovery of cholera and how it spread, um, which is a really interesting story. And there were all of these great examples in it, um, not just about how you use the tool, but thinking about how do you apply it? So who's your audience and what's your message? And sometimes it's not enough to just be to just have the tool and throw all your data into a tool, what's the story and how are you gonna have impact? And that's sometimes the hardest thing to do and I think that continues to be a challenge for us uh, as, you, as you'll see, which is why I think we continue to be inspired to um, help people use these tools um, because I think that is a challenge. So we produced Visualizing Information for Advocacy and then many years later, its evil twin appeared, another book called Visualizing Information for Advocacy, which we actually produced last year. Um, we actually ended up giving it the same name. It's a very different book. We gave it the same name because I think we, the truth is, and don't tell anyone this, um, we couldn't think of a better name because this book was the result of two years of workshops about how does the visual actually work? We're in this moment now where we're surrounded by visuals. Uh, we are almost composed of visuals. Um, and everybody wants to be able to use the visual um, to talk about whatever their issue is. And, but how does it, so how does it work in advocacy? How does it work in creating influence and shaping how we think about issues in advocacy? So we surveyed you know, hundreds of examples uh, from around the world of visual advocacy campaigns. We looked at how the visual works in different networks, how it um, finds life and continuity through technology, and then wrote a book about how, how it all happens, basically. Um, this book um, is, it's online. It's a website called visualizingadvocacy.org. Unfortunately, I forgot to open up a tab for it. Um, there are copies of this on sale, and um, I, I, think, it's, I think it's worth it. It's, uh, 
10 euros. I think we're sending it for 10 euros and uh, my beautiful assistants are at the back who will help you buy copies of these. We will soon have an online version as well which can be downloaded. Um, but this is something that takes time, I think, to go through. Um, and I mean, I could talk about that book for 45 minutes itself. It's, it's, um, it's, it's quite detailed and it's quite in depth. And I think that's because we believe, just like information has politics, just like technology has politics, the visual also is deeply political. And we're interested in uh, how the visual is used as evidence. Time? Okay. Um, so then I will quickly move to um, talking about some other things in a box, which is our work around security and privacy. And so like messages and mobiles in a box, we also made security in a box. And Security in a Box is actually one of our best-selling, uh, most popular, most loved products. Uh, I think last year it was 1.5 million views that we got of the online version. It exists again in about 14 languages, and this is because of a network of people who translated it into everything from Vietnamese to, to Spanish. So this is um, a step-by-step -step guide in how to use and install digital security tools. And then, because sometimes it's difficult to talk about these issues, um, we also created a little character called Ono, who's a friendly robot that allows people to start learning about technology and how it works. Because if you're going to use technology in advocacy, you've got to know what's behind the screen so you can learn how to protect yourself. Um, because there are risks in this digital age, as we all know. Um, and then I'll end with telling you about some of our most recent stuff very quickly. Um, because it seems like, yes, there's time is ticking. Um, okay. So this is a project called Me and My Shadow, um, which is about trying to have a conversation about online privacy, uh, how you can understand your own digital shadow and trace, um, and how you can minimize it. And um, Anne, who's here, actually has worked extensively on the project. Nico, who's here, who has built the website um, along with others. And again, we've produced like these really handy cards and materials that we give out in workshops um, to talk about uh, how you can trace your own digital shadow and minimize the risks that come from it. Because um, for people in different contexts and situations, I think that this is something that, well, it's not just, it, it's different, I think, depending on, on where you are. Um, but this is sort of a, uh, easy way to start introducing concepts, relatively easy way to start introducing concepts of online privacy, whereas security in a box may be more focused on things like tools uh, and how you how you can install them. And, and then I will just show you two more websites very quickly. Um, this is another very recent project where we've taken everything that we've understood and learned about the visual, about data, and if data can be used to um, track and monitor us, there's a way in which you can also turn that around and use it to track and monitor um, authority figures, institutions, governments. Um, so this is a project called Exposing the Invisible. It started out as a film project, and there are three films, one about, uh, about crime and corruption, financial corruption, uh, another one about digital investigations, and, this, and a third one about drones and drone warfare, and uh, the covert drone warfare in Pakistan. Um, and there are three films which, again, you can screen and watch. And I will end with this website, um, which is one of the new things that we've made. So it's not just about kind of demystifying, demystifying technology for other people, but also um, we like to experiment and make things that are visual. In this one, we've gone a little bit beyond the visual. Um, we got approached by an advocacy group called the Shadow Ministry of Housing in Egypt, and they had data about um, housing collapses in Egypt and um, why, were housing, why were houses collapsing. They wanted to be able to visualize it. And we said, um, maybe there are other ways. Maybe you don't have to go with the visual. So we sonified it. And the person who actually worked on this, primarily Gabby, is sitting at the back there. So you should talk to her. Uh, and I'm sorry to run out of time, but I want to just actually end um, with this. <laughs> I re okay, I really did mess with something, <laughs> not time, but...
So uh, I'm going to stop this and just say. Yeah, so. Um <laughs> right. So this is a sonification of data about housing collapses. It started as a spreadsheet and it ended as a sound piece um, sonifying um, what it means, what, what the data means. Uh, and you can go through these websites um, and kind of learn more about them by looking at them, but also by talking to all of us who are here. There's Kostab at the back, there's Lisa, there's uh, Gabby, there's Nico and uh, Morana's there and Laurent as well. So thank you very much. I'm sorry I've gone over time and please feel free to buy some books as well. Thanks. Yeah. Are there any questions regarding the tactical tech? <laughs>